This is an IRLP tutorial on how to upgrade a Debian-based Raspberry Pi node. Um, quite often, as time goes on, they get kind of stale as far as the operating system is concerned. So this is a way that you can use uh, commands to bring it up to the latest version. So uh, what I have shown on the window here is uh, somebody's gracefully allowed me to use their node as an example. I'm going to be going through and pausing it quite a bit through this video as uh, there's quite a bit of time involved in doing this. The first thing I'm going to do is I've created a PDF file here that uh, allows you to follow along with what I'm going to do. The first step, of course, is to perform a backup. You can follow along in the PDF document and generate your own backup. So what I'm going to do is start with step two. I know that this uh, node has already been updated so or has been... Um, uh, backed up, so I'm going to uh, just show you how I'm going to use this command here cat slash etc slash Debian version. And you're going to see that this one is running 7.6, so I'm going to use uh, the number before the decimal 7, determine that it's running a wheezy. Uh, the next step is to determine what the next release name is going to be, and that of course here is Jesse. So remember that word, you're going to use it here in a little bit. So the first thing they want you to do is do uh, a series of apt, apt get commands to um, upgrade. I'm doing this in the wrong order. Sorry, this should be update. Now you may see a couple of errors pop up when you do these, and that's often due to uh, repositories that you may have set up that are either no longer valid or have been archived. So as you can see, there's a bunch of uh, not founds coming up there. That's okay. Uh, when app, app get minus y upgrade, this will uh, just make sure that the version that's currently on the system is as up to date as it can be before we update it. Uh, that's kind of important because often, um, Debian puts in packages that are easier to upgrade later on before the new re releases come out. Uh, this particular one is about five years old now, so there's a number of updates that have been that have occurred since then. As you can see, it's just in the process of uh, determining what needs to be updated, and now it's going to download those files. Uh, I'll let this one run live. Normally, I would pause it here. It's going to take a bit of time to download all these files, uh, but I'll let this one run live. As you can see right now, it's downloading a file called Raspberry Pi Bootloader. It's about 30 megabytes in size. So it's downloaded all the nine things it needs to update here, and now it's going to actually apply those updates. Okay, so now that first step is done, I'm going to run the next command, which was app get minus y dist dash upgrade. Now it may or may not have any updates to do here. Uh, this one does. I went 
very quickly. Okay, and the last command I need to run here is this apt get minus y auto remove. This just uh, basically cleans things up a little bit. There's nothing there to clean. Okay, so now the next piece is to update the app sources files to reflect the next version. So I'm going to just show you those two files there in. I'm using the editor pico and then space slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list. Now this file, as you can see, contains only one line. Um, as sort of shown in the example here, you need to take the word Wheezy, which is the old version, and change it to the word Jesse, which is the new version, and save that file by going Control X Y and then press Enter. I'm going to do the same thing to um, the next file, which is the Raspberry Pi dot list file, and as you can see here. Again, we're changing the word Wheezy to Jesse. And I'm also going to add a file at the end here. It's called, or a thing that's called UI at the end. Um, you'll see in the documentation it says to add UI if it's not already there. Okay, so now we've updated our app sources list in order to um, uh, perform the update to the next version. I just want to show you one thing here. If you've got additional lines in here that are not commented out, you can comment them out by adding a, a, a exclamation point hashtag in front of them. Um, you only want to have these two single lines in these two files. All right, so carrying on with the document, our next step is to f perform the update. Now this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause it while it does it and give you kind of an indication of the time. So this one doesn't take very long. Apt get clean all, apt get update going to download all the new um, repository information files. This particular process doesn't take very long, but the next command I'm about to run, app get minus y upgrade, can take up to 30 minutes to complete. So I may pause the recording while it's going on and then bring it up if and if anything weird comes up I'll stop I'll turn the recording back on and show you what I do You can see a couple of things have come up with some interesting um, errors. It often gives you a, uh, a thing to uh, give you a, an idea of how to fix it. I'm just going to go ahead and do the app get upgrade. Normally you would put the minus Y in here. I just want to show you sort of the number of packages that this thing is actually going to update. And if I put the minus Y in there, it'll just go by so quickly. So I'm going to actually show you, as you can see here, look at all these um, commands that are being kept back and being upgraded. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to download here. And do you want to continue? I'm just going to press Y. You normally won't be asked for this continue if you use the minus Y tag in app get. So I'm going to continue this, but now I'm going to pause the recording or else it's going to be very long. Okay, just coming back here. Um, has mentioned in the uh, in the document under step six here sometimes it'll sort of stop um, in all cases you want to choose the default action uh, this particular one is the etc issue file 
Um, the default is no. I'm just going to hit the enter key here to allow it to continue. Um, the etc. issue file is the file that's displayed sort of when you log in. I'll show you how we'll fix that after once we're all done the updates. Same thing with the issue.net file. So this screen came up during the upgrade here a couple minutes in. Um, it'll say that there's services that need to be restarted on your computer. Um, we can just go ahead and say yes here. The restart the services during package upgrades without asking. Uh, things like the website or the web ser ser server and that are not critical. We're not like running a organization off of this Raspberry Pi or anything. So I'm going to actually go ahead and say allow this to restart or else it's going to ask me every time when it wants to do a restart of a service. Uh, usually what happens is an upgrade will occur and then a restart will have to happen for the new version to take course. Okay, so approximately 20 minutes went by there and uh, we were able to perform that step. The next step is to run app get minus y space dist dash upgrade. This is a, a separate set of packages that will need to be updated as well. Again, I will pause the video here as this is going to take several minutes. I just want to quickly point out one thing that came up here. As it configures the SSH server, um, it mentions that it should disable the SSH password authentication for root. But unless you have another way of getting in as root remotely or uh, like an SSH key or something, I would suggest you say no at this prompt. Okay, it's been about another 20 minutes or so and we've finally done the dist upgrade command. The next command you're gonna to wanna to run is this auto remove. What it does is it removes packages that are obsoleted or no longer required. Okay, now that the auto remove command is done, the next step is to actually reboot the computer. Now I'm remotely SSH'd into this computer, so I'm just gonna stop the uh, command here and then after the reboot is done by issuing the command reboot, I will come back. Okay, so it's come back now. So I'm just gonna show you, um, first, th first thing I'm gonna do actually is run uh, what's called the IRLP GPIO fix script. Uh, I don't need to actually perform a reboot after it quite yet. So now you're going to see that the Debian version is now 8.0. So the next step that I have to do is return to step two if required. So we're only up to version eight. So I literally have to go back up here and start all over again. Log in as root, check the version, figure out what the next version is going to be. This time it's stretch. So I'm going to actually just determine that. But the first thing I need to do is make sure that it's all up to date. So I'm just going to show you a little trick here. You can go app get clean all, a semicolon, app get update, a semicolon, app get minus y upgrade, semicolon, app get minus y dist upgrade, semicolon, app get minus y, auto remove. That pretty much puts all those commands all in a row, it means I don't have to come back here and restart it every time. I'm going to stop the video here as this is going to take, you know, another 35 to 40 minutes to perform all these upgrades. So now that we've upgraded from seven to eight, my next step will be to actually go from eight to nine and then again from nine to 10. I'm not gonna go through the details of all that. As, as I said, it's a 40 minute process of each. But my next step, of course, is to follow the next step five in the process and uh, edit the sources.list file. And this time we're going from Jesse to, um, let me look up here, from Jesse to Stretch. So if you follow through all of the um, the pieces, you'll just again update the raspi.list to stretch. 
And I'm going to go through and issue the exact same command. And again, it's going to take a while. I'm going to complete the video here as there's no point in doing it again, but you have to go one step at a time, very important. And then eventually this one will be updated to Debian 10. Thank you for your attention.